Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and today I'm going to show you how you can set up the FlashForge 85X to do multicolor printing. Now, I know to a lot of people, this is going to be a very simple and rudimentary video, but we always have to remember that there's new people getting into this space all the time, and they may not know all the things that you and I know. So that's what this video is going to be for, to show them how you can get this done pretty easily. Now, at this point, I'm assuming that you already have everything set up. You got the printer out of the box. You screwed in everything that needs to be screwed in. You got everything the way that it's supposed to go. And you are just trying to print something in multicolor that you found on the internet. Now, the first thing that I recommend you do is connect the printer to your network. Whether you want to use a FlashForge account or not, this particular step is going to make the whole process a lot easier. So you can either connect it to your Wi-Fi and then make yourself a FlashForge account inside of the Orca FlashForge slicer. Or if you don't want to do that, you can just connect it to your home Wi-Fi and then make sure that you select the LAN mode option that's in the settings of the printer. I'll leave a link to a video that I made showing you how you can set up LAN mode if you want to go that route. And we're also going to be using the Orca FlashForge slicer. You can do this with Orca Slicer, and I'll leave another link showing you what you have to do to do that. But since that one is just a little bit more involved, I'm just going to leave that to you if you choose to do that in the future. And for now, we're going to stick to Orca Flash Forge because it's more straightforward. Now you need to put all the filament that you're going to use inside of the IFS, meaning that you're going to put your spools of filament on those holders. You're going to take a strand of it, stick it up through that IFS. The printer is going to automatically recognize that you have filament. It's going to pull it all in. Now, once it's pulled in, you have to remember the printer does not know what you put inside of it. So you have to go into the filament settings and you have to choose the type of filament that you put in as well as the color that you're using as well and do that for all the filament that you have put in. So if you have all four filaments in the IFS, make sure you go through that process four times and choose the right type of filament and the color that you're using. So after that's all set up, let's say that you have a file that you want to print in multicolor. So you already downloaded and installed the Orca Flash Forward Slicer. If you're using LAN only mode, you make sure that you connected your printer to the slicer in LAN mode. Or if you made a Flash Forward account, you signed in to the slicer using this login prompt right here. After you've done that, let's go ahead and select the file. Let's select this one here. I'm just going to say no here because I was working on something previously. So we're going to start from scratch. Discard those changes. All right. So now this is loading up a 3MF file that I got from Maker World. Now, those particular files are meant for Bamboo Lab printers, but that doesn't mean that we can't use them because we absolutely can. This here is just telling us that this file was made with a different printer in mind. So keep that in mind before we slice it and send it to our printer because we don't want to mess anything up. So we're going to say OK to all of these warnings. And now. Here are all of the files that came in this 3MF file, all of the plates rather. Now, here is a quick tip. You see here up at the top, this is supposed to be a Bamboo Lab file. We don't want that. So we're going to choose the FlashForge 85X, which is the first thing that you're going to do once you get the slicer set up. You're going to select the printer and then it's going to automatically put the profile in here for you. So we're going to select the 85X. But here is a quick tip. A lot of times when you import a 3MF file that's already been colored, when you bring it into Orca Slicer or Orca Flash Forge, it is going to change the colors that the creator of the file set into colors that you already have listed in your slicer for maybe your particular type of printer. And when you do that, it can screw everything up and you have to recolor everything. But you won't have to worry about the colors changing if you do this. Go to this icon right here next to file, click it, go down to preferences and then scroll down to presets. And you'll see something here that says remember printer configuration by default is going to be checked but you need to uncheck it that way when you load up a 3MF file that's already colored, the colors will not change. So that'll be very helpful for you. 
All right, so we are going to just print this Luigi head right here. And let's see here that it has four different colors. These are the same colors I've already loaded in the IFS because I knew I wanted to print this. So what I'm going to do here is I could choose to move this here. If you're wondering what this is, this is called a prime tower. And what this does is it basically gives the nozzle an opportunity to properly prime itself so that the color changes will be more clean. So it's just going to, you know, build up the correct amount of pressure over here and get rid of any imperfections before it moves over to the main print. And this is what you really care about. This is going to be in here by default. I recommend just leaving it on and you can move it around if you need to. So let's just say this is what you want. You can change some settings if you want to change settings. Like, for example, I'll say, hey, I'm going to print this at 10 percent infill and I'm going to use, um, let's just say, adaptive cubic for the infill or just whatever. Do whatever settings that you want. Go ahead and click on slice plate. Is going to tell you all the information here, except for the amount of purge waste that is going to use. But you'll see here that it has five different filament changes. You can see this is where the prime tower is going to go over here on the right side and then click print plate. And then from here, you just basically have to match the colors that you see here to what you already have in the IFS. So in this case, black to black, beige to beige, white to white and green to green. Because remember, I already knew what I wanted to print. So I already made sure I put the colors where I needed to go. It doesn't matter what position you put those colors in when you're doing it this, this way. Just make sure that they are loaded up. It doesn't matter what spot they're in. I'm going to have leveling be selected automatically. Enable IFS is going to be selected because that's what's going to enable you to use all four colors. And then we are going to hit send. And from here, it's going to go over to the printer and it's going to do its thing. So this print won't take very long. We can keep an eye on it right here. We got our remaining time. You can pause it. You can cancel it if you want to. Here are the different temperatures that's going to be changing. It takes a very small amount of filament. It's only going to take about 11 minutes. So let's go take a look at how it looks. And this is how Luigi turned out. You see that he is quite small, but that's what I like about this printer. You know, even though it's not an expensive printer for, uh, you know, what it can do with the multicolor, multi-material stuff, it still captures those details pretty good. Now, there's another really important thing that you need to know. Even though you tell the printer the type of filament that you're going to be using and the color that you're going to be using, what you can't tell it are all of the specific parameters that you might want to have applied to your print. And that is all done in the slicer. So let me show you an example here. And I know that these are different models, but bear with me. I'm going to get to these in a minute. So let's say, for example, you wanted to print this house here. You need to make sure that the filament that you have loaded in the printer matches the type of filaments that you have listed over here. Meaning that if you tell the printer that you have PLA, you have to make sure that PLA of some kind, whether it's a preset or if it's a profile that you made yourself is selected over here. You, it can't just be some other type of random filament. So for example, so let's just say I wanted to print this here. And for this uh, portion here, this dark brown, let's say that it's going to be 95 A TPU. Okay. But I only have PLA loaded in the printer. So I go ahead and I slice it and I go to print it. But you see here, even though I can select PLA for all of the other spots, and I'm just selecting random colors as an example, when I get to TPU, you see that I can't select anything because it says that only support selecting materials of the same type. So you'll need to make sure that you have the correct filament type over here in the slicer as well as in the printer itself. All right, so when you go back and you change this to some other type of PLA, let's just say this was Flash Forge High Speed PLA, and then I click Slice, and then I go to Print, and you see that I can now select every single one because it's all PLA. All right, so that's something important that you need to know. And also, the 
uh, particular parameters that the printer is going to use, such as temperatures and all that stuff, that's all determined in the slicer. Okay, so just make sure that these different attributes are what you're actually going to want because even if you're using a different type of PLA and in the slicer it says that you're using FlashForge PLA, that's okay. You know, just see how it works and then just make sure that these temperatures are what you want them to be. Typically, it's going to be fine uh, for regular PLA. 215, 220 on the hot end is fine. I usually do 220. 60 degrees on the plate is usually good. 55 can be good as well. So anyway, you just need to make sure that these are going to be adequate for you for when you need to print. Now let's get back to the colorization part of this. All right, so let's just say, for example, you wanted to print out this house and you looked at these colors and you're like, man, I want to change this. I want to add more colors to it, but I want to do it inside of the slicer. Or maybe this was all just one color and you want it to just customize it yourself. Well, this is how you do it in Orca FlashForge. You select the model and then you go up to this icon here that says color painting and you click on that. Now, whatever colors that you're going to use, make sure that you have it all input right over here on the left side, because these colors here are going to be what you can choose from, from the filament colors over here on the right side. And then you have these different tool types that you can use. Generally, I find the fill tool to be the one that I like to use the most because the fill tool, let's just say I wanted to use yellow. It lets you just go in and it automatically selects these nice big regions that you can click on and it'll just paint the whole thing in solid just like that. So you can say I want three yellow right there. Then you can click on red. You can go over and then you can just start clicking on these parts right here. And then you have this edge detection and the smart fill angle that you can like increase a whole lot. And when you do that, it's just going to increase the I guess like the the amount that you can color in all at one time. You see how it colored in all of that. But if you just move it down to a lower level, then it gets a lot more uh, detailed in the different things that you can select. All right. So that's the fill tool. That's the one that I like. Um, and then you have height range here. And this is something where let's say you wanted to just print this entire bottom layer here in like yellow. You could kind of click and just drag down and then it's going to get these in yellow. Now you can see like there's a little bit of some brown left over and that's when you would adjust the height range to be higher so that now you can go in and cover up all of that that was remaining there. All right. So that's the height range one. And then you have gap fill. Now, gap fill is like when you're coloring something and it can be like these little gaps that are just all around. That's hard to color. And this will do as best as it can to fill in those gaps. So let me just see if something's going to uh, pop up when I do this gap fill. It doesn't really work too well with this particular model. But if you were trying to paint something that just has like a lot of like recesses and creases and things like that, and you can't quite get into it, you can try the gap fill option and see if that's going to cover everything up for you. But let's move over to this next option, which is called triangle. And these models are basically made up of a bunch of different triangles. So you can just go and just select the triangle that you want and just kind of click on it. And then for section view, you bring it all the way up. You see how things start to like really like disappear. You know, now I'm on the inside of the house. But if I bring it down, then you see like, OK, now I can get the full model. But yeah, um, all these models are just made up of these little, little triangles. Some are going to be bigger. Some are going to be smaller. But again, for 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 detail work, like something that tiny, then you can get this level of detail with it. And then you have the sphere and you have the circle, which technically are different, but they work very similar to me. So I have a hard time trying to exactly figure out what the big difference is. But basically, this is the circle. So you're basically just painting, you know, you're freestyling it with the circle. And then here is the sphere. And again, you're also just kind of freestyling it here. So this is something that I really don't use because, you know, it does require uh precision 
so you don't run over the edges because if you do that, the printer is going to try to print that and it's just going to lead to a lot more filament changes. But like I said, generally using the fill option is going to be good enough. We can erase all of this painting if we want like this and then we can just, just start painting different individual features as we see fit. Uh, depending on how complex the model is, it could take you quite a while to get everything perfect. And you also have to remember there is a bottom portion of this. You have to remember there is side portions and it can be very easy to just miss out on spots. Like you may color this whole thing, but you may forget that, oh, there's a little tiny area in here that also need to be painted that same color, you know? So you have to make sure that you go over it with a fine tooth comb so that you can get everything printed the way that you want it to be. And then when you're done, you can just simply click the color painting icon again, and then whatever you did, it will just show up right there. And then you're off to the races and do whatever you want to do. So that is it. That's just a real basic rundown on how to set up the FlashForge 85X to print multicolor things using models that you find online and how you can paint different models if you want to just do it yourself. Uh, it's not very complicated, but it is something that, of course, you're going to get just better with over time and it becomes second nature to you. So that's going to do it for now. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and leave a like and or a comment, or you can even subscribe to the video because I do stuff like this all the time. And I really hope that this will be able to help you out as you get more involved in 3D printing. So until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.